shower panels that look like slabs of stone and we made them from insulation foam. In this video, we're gonna teach you everything you need to know to transform that old shower enclosure into a work of functional art. This process is do-it-yourself friendly. We're gonna teach you how to make your own architectural molding using our products and play sand. You're gonna love the tips and tricks, the pro tips that we're gonna guide you along to take your shower pan and up level it. We used river rock to make this river house come to life. We transformed the whole project for my mom and dad. And in this video, we're gonna show you the shower step by step. The process is right here, right now. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Welcome to the 1950s, guys. Check this out. So here's your typical 1950s bathroom. Uh, everything's in working order, but it's just all coming out. We're gonna utilize our stone coat. We're gonna do a stone coat shower that can mimic mother nature and follow the river theme. We use our template material to be sure that our back wall fits like a glove. We have a window in that back wall, so I'm gonna template around that and be sure to get my measurements right. I'm simply gonna use a little bit of acetone in our squeeze bottle and our template material welds together instantly. Now, I'm gonna actually transform those measurements to my foam. Remember, I'm gonna apply glass doors to the foam, and so we need some backing embedded in that foam to create nice structure for those heavy glass doors to hang on. I'll use a straight shank on my router, and then I'm gonna apply some PVC board. I cut a little bit so that I can test fit the height, and it's perfectly flush. I'm gonna square out those edges with my multi-tool, and then I'm ready to embed the PVC strips so that I get that backing. I'm gonna use my quick coat to embed that so that it stays permanent, but I can actually work on this project the same day. It's gonna dry up in a couple of hours and be ready to sand. I'm also gonna apply some mechanical bond to these PVC boards by using a 50 grit metal sanding disc and roughing them up. Okay, it's time to push that into the quick coat and then use any excess in that container and a Bondo spreader to be sure I fill up the whole cavity. Remember, foam doesn't have a lot of structure to hold glass doors, so this PVC board did the trick. When we installed those glass doors, it hung on like a dream. It was extremely tough and extremely strong. So this is your solution to a complete waterproof system where you don't sacrifice structure. Okay, I'm gonna fill that void, anything that's left over, with a little bit of Bondo. I just want a nice flush finish before I move on to the next step. All of these steps are designed for the do-it-yourselfer. I'm also doing the edges since I have some Bondo mixed up to create a nice, beautiful, natural looking edge. You can do a rock face edge or a smooth edge, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna sand with 220 grit in between that so that I have a nice flush finish and I'm ready to start the epoxy process. I'm gonna use our fiberglass mesh rolls. All of these products can be found in our shower kits at Stone Coat Countertops. The fiberglass mesh roll provides reinforcement, strength, and durability to your shower foam wall system. It's easy to apply because it has a natural adhesive on that fiberglass. It sticks right to that foam. After I've laid out and trimmed the fiberglass, I'm gonna mix up some of our quick coat and our epoxy thickener so that I create my own mixture to embed this foam and fiberglass as one. The thickener makes sure that the epoxy doesn't run right off the edges. And I'm gonna tint this so that I don't have to pre-paint my boards. I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone and go ahead and use a shower squeegee to scrape it over that fiberglass so I have my foam walls prepped for the next step. I'm gonna also do the same coating to the edges, and now it's time to seam that back wall together. I've got my two side walls built, but remember that template material? I lay it out on two pieces of foam, and I trace it so I know how much I need to cut, so I don't prep too much foam, and I save time and money. Our quick coat and thickener 
and epoxy dye make a perfect seam material. It doesn't let go of that foam. And then I'm gonna go perpendicular to our seam with the fiberglass so that I get nice tight structure. I overlap that fiberglass by a few inches and again, apply that with a shower spreader and it comes out beautifully. I'm gonna have some high points and that's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect at this point. I'm tracing out my window and I'm giving myself about an inch and a half of play because I'll trim it on site after I install this back shower wall. Give yourself plenty of play so you don't worry on insulation day. After my quick coat is set up, I'm gonna sand off the excess on the back. And just for good measure, I'm applying some Tyvek tape so that as I transport my foam walls, I have no issues in the delivery. Okay, I made a giant table because this is a giant back wall. I'm just using some spacers that epoxy won't stick to so that when I pour this back wall, I'm elevated off my plastic table and I contain the mess. All right, I'm mixing my stone coat countertop epoxy at a one to one ratio. My son's mixing it with a drill and I've picked out my colors. I'm using metallic powders in white, diamond dust and silver and my dyes are black and white. I'm also using some spray paint and white, black, and champagne bronze. I love this color recipe. It came out beautifully. Now, when I was doing this back wall, I had the yin yang kind of thing going on. I wanted part of it to be dark and part of it to be light. I love adding diamond dust to anything because it gives it that natural level of shimmer that looks like mica flake as well as beautiful color mixed into that material. It really makes my project go up a level. All right, I'm doing an exotic pour where I take all those mixed colors, I put them in the same bucket, and I've built a tape dam to contain that bucket. I'm gonna pour that out nice and easy, randomly across my surface. This is a pro tip, don't overthink it. Pour it out random and you'll be amazed at how it came out. Now, for the yin yang theory, this was the darker half of the material, and I'm gonna pour a second coat that's a little bit lighter. This was a giant back wall. This was a huge pour. So go ahead and do it in a couple of pours. They'll meet together and level out beautifully because we have a long open time with that stone coat countertop epoxy. Look at the cellular structure, the veins, the natural looks you're gonna get doing this exotic pour technique. Remember, mix your colors, pour them all back into the bucket and let it go look at the lighter version meeting the darker version this allowed me to make a light and a dark panel for the two return walls which made it look like i did everything on purpose knowing that each pour is going to be a little unique i erred on the side of caution by making a light side and a dark side and it came out like i planned it to a t Using our propane torch or a heat gun, you can sweep across the surface and remove the bubbles. I'm also adding veins where I want to accentuate them and maximize them. Those panels are coming out pretty sweet, right guys? Sneak peek! All right, stop taking notes. We've put together a downloadable, printable PDF with everything you need to know, pro tips and all, how to install and create epoxy shower walls like a pro. Check out that link, guys. We also have an epoxy shower kit with all the tools, all the sundries you need to create epoxy shower walls. This is a three-piece shower wall kit, so I need to do the other two panels. And some very close friends and folks that have their own YouTube channels flew all the way to Oregon to help me on this passion project where we remodeled an old cinder block house for my mom and dad and turned it into a log home. We squeegeed out a very thin wash coat with a little bit of black dye mixed with our epoxy. We're using the other colors to create our exotic pour bucket. Paul Ricaldi from Paul's Toolbox was up first on the bucket. He poured out like a pro and he teaches do-it-yourselfers how to do everything on YouTube. Rhonda and Kenny came out from Texas to put their stamp on these shower walls. My good friend Ken, who made the sink on the vanity in this very bathroom, also got in on the fun. My good friend Brandon, he stepped up. He's an engineer who teaches me a thing or two and he showed me his skills on the epoxy process. It was fun to see all the different hands get to work on this panel including our cameraman and editor Luke give him a thumbs up he jumped in to show that he's got this 
this process came together super fast. We had a blast adding those veins and doing the finishing touches as we desired. You know, this was so much fun using multiple folks on the same project. The Burrow Hunters stopped by and joined us on the second panel. If you haven't seen these folks on YouTube, you gotta check them out. My four-year-old Bubba has a blast pouring epoxy. If he can do it, you can too. I want to personally thank all my friends who came out to help me on this project and button up all the finishing touches Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart so much. You this ain't my first rodeo. Let me show you a project I did a while back on our YouTube channel where we made shower walls look like Carrera marble. It was time for the clear coat just like it is now. We sand it with 220 grit. We wipe the dust. And when we're applying a clear coat, we simply use the same epoxy, but with no color additives. We mix for two minutes using a drill. We'll pour that out. And we're gonna use a 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel to apply the material. After we've troweled it out, we're gonna use a chop brush and we'll chop the surface to break surface tension and assure that we have a beautiful mix with no sticky spots. We've done the hard work for you. Capitalize on our years of experience and follow the tips and tricks in this video and you will get amazing results every time. Check out that Carrera Marble project. All right, back to our giant stone wall. I'm sorry, it's foam that looks like stone. We're gonna remove those drips and we're ready to load this in the trailer. I'm just double checking my template measurements because I oversized this. Remember, I gave myself plenty of material to work with. I'm trimming the edges so I have a nice factory cut so my snug fit comes out just as planned. After I've removed the drips, I'm gonna sand with 220 grit so I can apply our ultimate top coat. This top coat gives a very natural sheen and it's easy to apply and it's extremely durable. Using our two roller top coat technique, we're gonna use one roller to apply the material and the dry roller to erase any lap lines and remove excess material so it looks like it was sprayed on and it looks tight and professional. I love that system because it's easy to follow, but it looks perfect when you're complete. For years, I've installed natural stone and I can't tell you how enjoyable it was to transport this giant wall being so light and easy to maneuver. There's no way we could have gotten this in in one piece if we made it out of marble or granite. I made my panels slightly bigger than they needed to be so I could do most of my fabrication and cutting right on site. That made it simple and worry free. I'm just using normal wood cutting blades that are fine teeth so that I have perfect cuts every time. I'm doing this over a piece of foam on the deck so I don't score through and hurt the finished deck. I'm masking everything off and using a sharpie to mark my lines. And again, I can use a multi-tool or any tool designed to cut through wood. Foam and epoxy was so easy to fabricate on site and everything fit like a glove. I'm using 100% silicone and putting dollops on the wall after I've pre-fit everything. Don't introduce the silicone till you know you have a perfect fit. That's a pro tip and it makes you not create an excess mess. So 100% silicone on the back wall and I'll glue those panels and shove them into place. They're so lightweight that I simply use some tape to hold them against the wall while that silicone set up for me. Now I'm gonna cut my back wall flush to the window. So I laid that out and I'm using my multi-tool to trim it perfectly. Remember how I grew that material when I poured? I knew that I would cut it out flush on site and this is why I wanted to create an architectural molding frame to really accentuate this window and make it look like a high-end bathroom that you may see in a beautiful hotel room 
and I did this using our epoxy and sand. But first I had to make a mold knowing that I was gonna do this process over and over again. I love using travertine tiles and molding for backsplashes and showers and whatever else. So I used our one-to-one -one mix on our silicone mold making material to make this magic happen. After my son and I mixed the material, we poured it over our tiles that we laid out on melamine as a form. We also poured it out on that trim and we were able to release it the next day. It came off that trim so perfectly and you don't need a release agent. Okay, now I'm pouring play sand into that mold so that I can see how much sand I'll actually need. Here is the process. You're going to mix up your quick coat and then you'll introduce that to the sand after it's mixed. We're just mixing it in that sand so we could create this trim for the shower window. Using our quick coat allowed us to take it out of the mold in a couple of hours. It was still fresh, so it was permeable. We could actually flex the molding. I cut off any excess with the razor knife and check out what we were able to create. What? I mean, what? look at that. Ah, look. Hold up. Mike's a genius. Golly. So there's your, these trim tiles are like 20 bucks a piece to get them out of travertine. Stone Cold kind of tops. You got this. Great comment. We got a great comment here. What kind of cleaners can you use on an epoxy shower wall? That's a great question. Really, you want to get cleaners that are non abrasive and that are made specifically for kitchen and bathroom surfaces. That will keep your epoxy projects looking just as good as new like the day you poured them for many years to come. I'm thinking about creating some molds for inset shower caddies and shower shelving, maybe some waterproof window sills. You can even recreate moldings that look like architectural wonders, carved corbels for overhangs on countertops, and even furniture legs. The sky's the limit, so stay tuned to Stone Coat Countertops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell because we're bringing you more tips, tricks, and tutorials on how to turn sand into anything. I wanted our shower to be completely waterproof and this was a perfect solution. I templated out the exact size of that shower. I cut a piece of wood so we can actually miter these corners, mock it up so that it fit perfectly on site. We used our quick coat and some sand to create our own glue. We used some screws at each corner so that it locked the form into place so that we kept it nice and square. And then I removed my temporary window template and let it dry. After everything was dry, it was time to make it feel nice to the touch and get my finishing touches and my paint on this project. I had a blast just playing with this process and deciding what colors I would use. And you know, less is more. It came down to just using the colors that match the shower. After we installed the shower panels, we needed to be sure to silicone the joints so that no water got behind the walls. And that's just easy to do by using some blue painter's tape and some 100% silicone. Same thing with our window frame. I mocked it up, I hung it, and then I taped around it. I added a bead of silicone around it and I glued it to the wall and let it sit overnight. That way I didn't have to use any fasteners through this and it hung on beautifully. That silicone is tough. It's not going to release and it looks like it grew right there in place. I'm so proud of this window trim. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Is this the kind of window trim you would like in your shower? It's an architectural wonder. Okay, it was reveal day and it's time to show my mom and dad their new home. My mom hadn't seen it yet and her and my dad's reaction was priceless. Check it out from cinder blocks to logs. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Again, I personally want to thank everybody who helped us on this passion project. Oh my goodness, look at the shower. Holy smokes. See the molding I made? Oh, I can't believe how you did this. That was a different foam. Oh it doesn't feel like foam. content.
We asked the insiders from our Facebook group at Stone Coat Countertops if they wanted to learn how to do the shower pan and the vote was unanimous. So here's how we did it. We started with pea pebbles and we cleaned them off because they were quite dirty. I drilled some holes in a mud pan and I washed off the rocks. I laid out a canvas in the sun and I poured out the rocks so that they would dry and we didn't introduce excess moisture when we put epoxy into the pebbles. I swept the shower pan and masked off the drain so I didn't get any epoxy where it didn't belong. I used our stone coat countertop epoxy. I mixed it up prior to pouring it into the pebbles. After I mixed for two minutes using a drill, I poured it directly into the rocks. I used my hand to really force that around, mix it and make sure all the rocks got wetted out. After getting the rocks prepped and having a little help from my four-year-old, I used a wooden float to trowel it out. I already had a pre-slope in the dam, so I just needed to do a thin coat of rocks. And I loved how tight they fit, how easy that was to move and meld around with my wooden float. Here I'm using a 50 grit sanding disc designed for stone. It's a diamond disc to get rid of any little high points so that you had a nice smooth feel to those bare feet. I'm jealous. It's warm, it's not cold like tile. Click the link to be taken to our epoxy shower page where you can save thousands learning to do this yourself and bundle together the epoxy, the fiberglass mesh, and all of the colors that you choose all in one box. Pretty much a shower in a box coming to your very own home. Click the link.